Hey, welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about gratitude while we take a look at the story of a guy who took a little time and made a big ah, impact. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about gratitude, which is letting others know you see how they've helped you. Got some heavy reading to do? Uh, I gotta write a bunch of thank you cards to the people who came to my party last week. That's great. And it takes forever. Saying thank you can be fun. Do you have a timer on your watch? Yes, as a matter of fact, I don't have my watch. No worries, we'll make one. Are you sure we have the time? Watch me. Well, let's stop TikToking and get to it. Let's make it. Today, we're going to make time. Sounds great. Wait, like a time machine? Welcome to the future. Not that kind, silly. We're going to make an hourglass. Oh, I love watching the sands of time fall. Well, this one doesn't use sand, but it's still pretty neat. Now, you'll need two empty water bottles with no labels. They should be the same size with the same size caps. I got these from a recycling bin. Perfect. We'll also need two straws, duct tape, food coloring, hot glue sticks, scissors, a drill, and a hot glue gun. I think that's everything. All right. First, glue the two caps together. Let's plug this hot glue gun in. It's in. And wait for it to dry. Hold them for a few seconds until they feel solid. Then, wrap some duct tape around the rims so it won't leak. Now, you'll need a grown-up for this next part. Use a drill. With a drill bit the same size as the straws to make the holes through the bottle caps. Here's a hack. Put something underneath the bottle cap so you don't drill the furniture. That's a good hack. Okay, here we go. Oh, easy as pie. Perfect. And now, use a pair of scissors to get rid of all the yucky leftover pieces. I'd say we're clear now. Next, cut the straws so they're two inches long. Next, push them through the holes and add some hot glue around the rims. I got that. Alrighty. In the end, one straw should stick up and the other one should be sticking down, just like this. Before we get to the final steps, let's move all this out of the way. Now, it's time to fill the bottles. We're going to need a cookie sheet and some funnels. Here's the funnels. Perfect. We fill one with oil and one with water. What color should we make the water? Decisions, decisions. How about blue? My favorite color. Now the hard part. Uh-oh. On the count of three, we flip the bottle of oil onto the bottle of water and screw the bottle upside down. Ready? Yes. Okay. One, two, three. Go, go, go. Screw, screw. I think we got it. I think we got it. Yes! yes! <laughs> now, let's see how this thing works. Wow. Oh. This is so pretty. What a cool way to measure time. So, are you ready for the next fun part? Always. <laughs> I challenge you to a gratitude game. I bet I can come up with more things to say thank you for than you by the time the last beat falls. Oh, you're on. <laughs> ready, set, set. Go! I'm grateful for... My mom! She makes amazing lasagna. Uh, my teacher. She teaches me stuff. Uh, my mail carrier. She gets me my packages. Uh, even in a storm. Restaurant services. They they get my food hot and ready. My best friend. She makes me laugh. Uh, the bus driver. I'm never late because of him. Music. It cheers me up. My dog. He gives the best cuddles. My house. It's small and cozy. Trees. They give us oxygen. Pizza. I mean, who doesn't love pizza? Um, 
God! He made everything. And he's always with us. So, how'd we do? <sighs> you won. Congratulations. Thanks, Sebastian. <laughs> Speaking of saying thank you, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Luke, one of the four Gospels that tells us the story of Jesus' life. Though Luke was not Jewish, he became a believer in Jesus and a close friend of the Apostle Paul, traveling with him to tell people about Jesus. Luke was a doctor and cared very much about details and accuracy. He wanted to record all of the events of Jesus' life in an orderly way. Luke spoke with many people who had seen and heard firsthand the amazing things that Jesus had done. Then Luke wrote it all down. He wrote like an investigative journalist, being really organized and paying close attention to every detail. In Luke, we read stories of Jesus' love and compassion, even while Jesus was traveling to Jerusalem to give up his own life, which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone. So Luke recorded that one day Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. As Jesus was going into a village, 10 men ran out to meet him. They had a terrible skin disease that caused sores to appear all over their bodies. Stop right there. Don't come any closer. This terrible disease was very contagious and there was no known cure. The men were scared and hopeless. Jesus, master, have pity on us. People who had this skin disease were usually forced to leave their homes and towns and no one would talk to them or go near them they may not have seen their own families for years. Jesus was their last hope. Jesus' followers must have been shocked that Jesus didn't back away from the men. He looked straight in their eyes and said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. I bet the men were confused. They didn't feel or look as though they were healed. They may have argued about whether to do as Jesus said. The priests say we're unclean. How can we return without being healed? They'll just send us away again. But what do we have to lose? I think we should do it. Even though Jesus' instructions didn't make sense, they headed toward town to find the priest. And get this, while they were on the way, their sores started to disappear. They were healed. Oh, look at my arm. The sores are gone. And my legs, they're clean. We're healed. The men were so happy that they ran straight to show the priests, but one of them stopped. Jesus made us well. I've got to say thank you. The 10th man ran back. He was so grateful. He threw himself at Jesus's feet. Praise God. This man was a Samaritan. Some people didn't like Samaritans and treated them badly, yet, the Samaritan man was the only one who returned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Weren't all ten healed? Where are the other nine? Didn't anyone else return and give praise to God except this outsider? Get up and go. Your faith has healed you. Even though all ten men experienced this amazing miracle and all ten were healed, only one came back to show his gratitude. It's always important to take time to say thank you. The end. Wow, I can't believe those guys left without saying thank you. It's always a good idea to give thanks, especially to God who gives us so many good things. So, what's our part in the story? Saying thank you lets people know you see and appreciate them. Like the Samaritan did when he was healed. I feel like the other guys were probably thankful too. Yes, but only one actually said thank you. When we feel thankful, it's always important to show it by actually saying thank you. Sometimes I forget to say thanks. Like when one of my parents cooks dinner. Or when my teacher helps me understand something. You can even say thank you for a gift when it's not your favorite. I remember my aunt once made me this sweater with a big cow on it. It wasn't my favorite, but I like that she thought of me. From now on, I'm saying thank you to everyone. My mom, my dad, my crossing guard. 
Saying thank you is a great way to show others you see how they've helped you. So thank you for having me. See you next time. Bye. So here's the thing. Take time to say thank you. It's a great way to show you appreciate the people in your life. Round two? Well, yeah. Thank you for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. Uh, thank you for being an awesomely zany co-host. Thank you for always knowing what we're going to do. Uh, shout out to whoever put up these lights so you can see us. And the amazing camera crew. That's right.